All right, y'all. We're going to go to Jamaica here for this one. All the way to Jamaica. Um, and I don't know about y'all, but this I usually don't do a current event, current event, but just because uh, this is going to be a marker for this video. This video is a time constrained video, but I'm sure someone might, might watch it down the road years from now, maybe even. But for the people in Jamaica, uh, my thoughts and my, you know, my spirit energy goes out to you because of what happened with Hurricane Matthew. Now, you didn't get hit and devastated as bad as Haiti, but man, I'm, I'm with you, Jamaica. You got, I seen videos. It was really a rough ride. <clears throat> Matthew, one of the, it just happened today, so... It's still happening, I think. I don't know, maybe not. But one thing I know for sure is it really devastated Haiti. And Jamaica got hit pretty hard. So we're going to go with uh, Azam Ahmed. Awesome. Awesome author from the New York Times. <clears throat> Jamaica's long opposed to marijuana. Now wants to cash in on it. Montego Bay. Jamaica has long be bemoaned its reputation as a land of ganja. It has enforced draconian drug laws and spent millions on public education to stem its distinction as a pot mecca. But its role as a major supplier of illicit marijuana to the United States and its international image, led by the likes of Bob Marley, whose Rastafarian faith considers smoking up uh, a, a religious act, has been too strong to overcome. Now, the first part of that's a little weird. It's Jamaica's not really that known for bombarding the um, shores of America with its demon weed or whatever. Um, when it, it's been since I was a kid that anybody even bragged about having Jamaican weed. And whenever someone reports going to Jamaica and smoking the weed, it's usually nothing too spectacular. <clears throat> All right, so... Having watched states like Colorado and California generate billions of dollars from marijuana, Jamaica has decided to embrace its herbaceous brand. Rather than arresting and shunning the country's Rasta population, the Jamaican authorities will leverage it. Beyond decriminalizing the possession of small amounts of marijuana last year, Jamaica has legalized use to medical marijuana, which is ultimate, with its ultimate sights set on wellness tourism and the money that it could bring. And for good reason, Jamaica has one of the lowest economic growth rates in the developing world, striking contrast to the global success its citizens have enjoyed in the world of, worlds of sports and music. So having done just about everything experts say a stup stupendously indebted nation should do, sticking to austere fiscal plans, adapting prudent macroeconomic policies, and creating a friendly climate for outside uh, investors, Jamaica is adding marijuana to its arsenals. So they let the right-wingers take over, and now the right-wingers are like, duh, Jamaica, weed. Jamaica, weed, Jamaica, weed. If you haven't noticed, the reason why Greece flopped so hard and, you know, the New World Order couldn't scrape up the pieces and put it back together, because it doesn't have some kind of a, you know, I mean... A really big export that's like oh yeah that Greek shit's the best you know like I mean Jamaica is not even that with weed it's just oh Jamaica yeah that's the place to go tropical weed Bob Marley music chill you know I mean it's a good branding thing and these New World Order types are not stupid that's what they do they're like oh psh, Jamaica no-brainer weed that'd be like um Milwaukee uh, beer no-brainer <laughs> I'm just they're, just, they're really simple people, these New World Order types. And I'm, it's funny that I'm saying that because he, when we're talking about Azam Ahmed, he actually says this too. So let's go back to the article. The New World Order has brought together an odd assortment of characters. See, I told you. At a recent conference at a luxury hotel in Montego Bay, the suited government officials and business leaders mingled with pot farmers and Rastafarian leaders like First Man who kicked off the conference with a speech on the global benefits of ganja. We are talking about a plant that bridges the gap between all of our relationships, First Man, who was barefoot, with a Rasta scarf around his neck, said to a packed room. Our planet 
needs this relationship to happen. As the head of the Rastafarian village in Jamaica, first man was speaking at the first CanX conference, a gathering of government and local leaders trying to figure out just how the country can most effectively make this about face without neglecting international law. No one is really clear how the industry will evolve. Technically, the United Nations Convention on Drugs, which requires nations to limit the production, trade, use, and possession of drugs, still prevails, meaning that outright federal legalization is, well, illegal. But it, with the United States and Canada edging towards permitting the drugs use, Jamaica wants in too. In the past, the United States really left, uh, rarely, wait, really left no room for maneuver, said Mark Goldberg, the former Minister of Justice who developed the le le legislation to permit medical marijuana production in Jamaica. Quote, but with, Obama, well, with the Obama administration creating an opportunity for states to do what they want to do, it created a window for all of us, meaning like the whole islands, Caribbeans, Jamaica. I guess, you know, like if you, if you live in the greater America area and you're considered some kind of a state of America, you probably figure that, if, especially Jamaica, I mean, you're Jamaica. Grow it, sell it, no one's going to care. Obama's not going to send the troops in. All right, where the real market is and where the real money is remains to be seen, he added. We are just preparing for it. Okay, so for some societies at the beginning of a post-prohibition era, which, as it was with alcohol decades ago, the global brands and the untold billions were still to be made. That's not, that, again, I like this guy, his writing's awesome, but it's not super true because a lot of those brands were already there, and they were already global, and they were already famous. They were just uh, not as famous and global as they could be as globalization started to evolve more. But when they were prohibited, uh, prohibition style, they just kind of chilled back in the corner and waited for it all to blow over, or they probably sold some stuff underground. A lot of these companies were non-American companies like Canadian whiskey makers and people that made liquor in other countries that weren't affected by the prohibition. That was kind of a worldwide thing for a minute there. Uh, but the overall thing about it is, is those were companies that existed prior to the prohibition. In the marijuana world, all you had was just people running like the wild, wild west, growing weed illegally as hell. And there was no, there was no brand names and globalized uh, things going on. So anyway, back to the article. No one as yet has sold any product legally, be it for medicinal purposes or whatever, uh, but the government is gearing up to meet whatever the market, whatever market presents itself. Quote, Jamaica for so long has been associated with this plant, said the conference organizer, Doug Gordon. Quote, now it's a business opportunity, one that can change the future of this country through jobs and income, one that can change our GDP. Of course, all this has stoked fears of inequality for the poor rural farmers who have long been targeted for doing exactly what the country is now trying to take advantage of. Many fear that big money will come in, monopolize the industry, and leave those on the margins exactly where they found them. <clears throat> kind of like here, kind of like anywhere else where cannabis laws, well mostly in America, you always want to make sure that the small farmers that were getting demonized you know why you want to make sure that they stick around and are given a part of this business? Because they're the ones that made it legal by being activists all these years. They're the ones that fought for these laws to change. They're the ones that want to, uh, to prosper from it, you know? I mean, not everybody's greedy, but some people just want to prosper from it. And they feel like, deservingly so, you know, they've been involved in the game for a long time and they feel like they've got somewhat of a reputation in their community and stuff. And there should be no reason to demonize them and put them out of the business. Aya V, a Rastafarian leader who sits on the nation's nascent uh, licensing authority, summed up concerns by pointing to the many suits and relatively few Rastas at the conference. Quote, if we're not organized and we're not helped, the possibility exists for the ganja industry to become the next tourism, coffee, or sugar industry where our people are used as common laborers and the wealth is confined to a few. 
he said. Jamaican leaders say that they are trying to heed the warning. Most agree there should be access to capital for small farmers as well as breaks and expensive breaks on expensive licensing fees and other upfront costs. <clears throat> but those two are yet to be determined. Even entrepreneurs agree that the playing field is not a level one. Uh, Veyron Baker, a well-traveled and educated entrepreneur, has started Ganja Gram, an application where users can read up on laws regarding marijuana in Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica. Ultimately, he hopes to make it something of an Uber for marijuana smokers, allowing clients to order and select products for delivery through their phones. He is researching, or sorry, he is searching for partners and investors to help fund his ambitions, but his but the pitch remains difficult. There is a lot of gray areas, Mr. Baker said. Uh, people don't really understand what the government is doing. All right, then you have Bailey Vos Voswani, by contrast, is a prominent businessman in Jamaica who has created several brands, including Marley Brand Coffee, on behalf of the Marley family. He is already working with research with a research license, and last month harvested the first crop of legal marijuana in Jamaica. He is not only clear on the rules in place now, but is in a position to help shape those to come. He has ample capital to invest in a business know-how. Wait, he has ample capital to invest in business know-how, specifically in the marijuana industry in Colorado. Aha! So it is hard to imagine how he will not dominate the market here when it finally does open up. Quote, I'm trying to bring a corporate structure to this and do my part to build brand Jamaica, he said. Brand Jamaica. Uh, quote, I've been given a set of rules and all I do is follow it. It's not beneficial to knock the rules. Yeah, especially when you uh, are the ones that's writing them. Maybe, I don't know about that. He sounds like somebody that's well connected. Uh, all right, to date there has been a lot of knocking of the rules. In fact, farmers, Rastafarians, and academic uh, types have joined forces to slow the transformation underway, fearing small farmers will be railroaded. Katamawi Knife, a Rastafarian academic, spent a significant portion of his presentation at the conference bashing the Cannabis Licensing Authority, the government's regulatory apparatus for ganja. <laughs> Out of all the words I have to call this stuff all the time, that's my favorite one. <laughs> You know, marijuana, I said at one point that I just wanted to stop saying it because that was the racist term that they invented to demonize uh, cannabis sativa and cannabis indica. But cannabis sativa is the one that they basically, like, used and named everything after. All right, how do we make money on this? What is its growth strategy, he asked, directing his questions to a member of the licensing authority who is awkwardly sharing the stage with them. I have asked, and I haven't seen anything. He's basically saying, how does all the people that are in the game right now, I mean, they're poor, struggling people that are living in the shadows. They live from crop to crop. How are we going to get them in this industry? If you guys are planning on making billions of dollars, uh, you should be able to get them a piece of that pie chart, right? The licensing authority member, Delano Syverite, took the accusations and jabs on stage. Afterward, he said Dr. Knife uh, had made some good points, but it did not change the fact that Jamaica was uh, desperate for the funds that cannabis could provide. Um, to claw its way back to prosperity and pay out one of its worst ratios of debt to gross domestic product in the world, the country is adhering to strict austerity regimes set out by the International Monetary Fund, which is, has meant little public spending in the last few decades. The IMF is a, is a gang. The big banks crushing small farmers. I don't know how they're, I mean, they used to do this stuff back in the day and just kill all the small farmers. Not marijuana, but just whatever, you know, the IMF or whatever the, the gangster, banksters wanted to take over, they would just come in and kill all the small farmers. All right, they're done. Let's put our people in place and do this a different way. What are they doing now? They're just cutting off all their resources. Now, leaders are desperate to find any means to expand the economy. And for some officials, earning the money quickly and efficiently means allowing the market to determine the winners, a strategy that favors those with resources. Quote, ultimately, it's going to be hard to stop it, Mr. Savarite said. 
And we don't necessarily want to stop it. We have adopted the principles of capitalism, but we also believe that small farmers should have a leg up for a certain amount of time. Wow, that's brutal. Like you're saying, if you don't, you know, sink or swim, how long are you going to get a chance to swim? We'll see. Uh, Orville Silvera, the head of the association that represents about 2,000 marijuana growers and was formed with the government's blessing, worries that big money will get concessions for huge amounts of acreage, boxing out the smaller farmers toiling away on a few acres. But he is not opposed to the survival of the fittest as long as the farmers who have been growing their ganja in the shadows for decades get a fair shot. Quote, we, will, we want to build this from the ground up, he said. Let those among us do... Uh, let those among us who can do it expand. The others, he said, can fail. And like I said, that's kind of a Darwinian uh, economic kind of a way that capitalism works. Um, it, it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do and how much money you can produce on your own without getting loans from big banks and all that. As soon as you know they see you operating and they crush you because they're way bigger they have so much more money you know like no matter how good you do and you got like a nice little pole barn and you got like a couple acres outdoor grow and you know you got like three or four people working for you or five people or six people or whatever ten people here they come and they set up this big mountain full of weed with warehouses all around it and you know who are they putting to work? The same people you would have hired, but they're paying them less because they're not sharing profits. They're not paying people according to compensation for good work. Um, we don't know any of this, but I'm just saying that that's usually how these corporate takeovers operate. And it's pretty sad to see Jamaica as like, I guess the experimental ground of what kind of bullshit will people take when you try to go in and say oh wow looks like you guys are doing pretty good with this thing here now you're saying that, that Jamaica can be a marijuana mecca or marijuana tourism it already is but the money is being made on small deals in the corner of town and stuff like that and they're just saying well hey we want to put this in storefronts and coffee shops and make all the money ourselves there's got to be a there's got to be a compromise you, you got to make a pie chart you got to give the pie chart uh, consideration to the people that have made their way with this, the people that have experience, the people that know what they're doing. Jamaica is no different than anywhere else. You have small farmers that have been doing this forever, under the shadows, in the shadows, and then a little bit of light comes through and it's not shining on them. And it's making them mad because they were the ones out there getting petitions signed and fighting in the streets for legalization their whole lives.